everyone, it's French Fries Yarn, and today I'm going to talk about one of my whips that I've been doing. I don't remember what it was. I think it was supposed to be a yellow scarf or something. I didn't get to finish it, so I'm thinking of frogging it all and trying to make a wig out of it. So I'm just doing that right now. I'm just going to be using this lighter yellow to make my hat for right now. Since it's going to be hiding from this darker yellow. We will make a magic circle. And then chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to double crochet 11 times in the magic circle. The chain three counts as a stitch. So it'll be like we have 12 stitches in the circle. We will be working in multiples of 6. Pull the tail tightly to close the magic circle. And then we will slip stitch into this chain right here. Pull it tightly. And chain three again. The chain three will count as a stitch. And we will double crochet into the same stitch. And then we will double crochet two times in each stitch. We will end up with 24 stitches by the end of this row. Then we slip stitch into the next stitch. Chain three. Double crochet two times into the next stitch. Then this will be the repeating pattern, which will be double crocheting once into the next stitch. And double crocheting two times into the next stitch. And we will end up with 36 stitches by the end of this row. And slip stitch again. Chain three. One, two, three. Double crochet into the next stitch one time and then double crochet twice into the next stitch one and two so the pattern repeat is going to be double crochet once into the next two stitches and then double crochet two times into the next stitch. So one, one, and then two. One, one, and then two stitches into the next stitch. And that's the pattern repeat for this whole row. Okay, so by the end of this row, we end up with 48 stitches. And now we're going to increase again. We slip stitch into the chain three space into the third chain on top and chain three one two three double crochet once into the next three stitches nope two stitches because this counts as a stitch so one and then two double crochet into the next stitch and we're gonna do this as a repeating pattern all the way around this row so one double crochet into the next three stitches One, two, three, and then double crochet two times into the next stitch. So that's the repeating pattern all the way around. I slip stitch together, do the 
chain third the third chain from the chain three stitches and then I chain three again this counts as a stitch so that's one double crochet and then we add one double crochet into the next three stitches so that equals four stitches one two and three so that's four stitches and then double crochet two times into the next stitch and this would be the repeat all the way to the end of the row so one double crochet into next four stitches and then two double crochet into the next stitch and that would be all the way around to the next row and you'll have so by the end of this row we ended up with 72 stitches after that row I chained four one two three four I skipped the first chain from the hook and single crocheted one into the next three stitches and then I slip stitched into the next two stitches and I turned and single crocheted into the next two stitches in the back loops only single crocheted into both loops of the last stitch so every time we're on top of the brim, we are going to single crochet through both loops. So chain one, single crochet through both loops, and then we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches in the back loops. So. This is the front loop and this is the back loop. We're going to single crochet there. And We slip stitch into the remaining in the next two stitches do both loops and one and two and then we turn Skip the two slip stitches and single crochet into the back loop of the next stitch. The next two stitches and single crochet into both loops in the next stitch on top. Chain one. Every time we're on top, we single crochet into both loops and then chain one and turn. This is going to be the last one. This one's the one that we slip stitched into already. It looks like we didn't, but we did. And there's only one more left at the end. Right here. And this is the slip stitch when we connected the row together. So there's only one left right here. We're only going to use slip stitch into that one. It's okay if we have two or one left. Turn. We're going to get the other side through one loop. It doesn't matter if it's the front or the back. You can choose. So I chose the front loop from this stitch and the back loop from the other stitch on the other side. I skip the slip stitch and go into the next stitch through the back loop. We're just gonna slip stitch it all together. So 
missing the front loop and the opposite loop which is the back loop and switch slip stitch through all these chain one to secure all of the loop and cut the yarn and then we just pull this tight and weave it in and now i'm just going to show you how to make the strands of the fur i already have some right here we just need about six inches measure it like this again i cut it I just do this until I have a lot so I can make enough strands for the hair. I already made a whole bunch right here. I filled up the whole thing and used it like a basket for the wig cap. We're gonna put our hooks between each of these double crochet stitches like this. Like on the other side you can't it's not really going all the way through the other side just a surface of the stitch and I'll add maybe two or three strands of these and pull it through the hole and pull tight In order to make the wig look more realistic, it's better to put yarn on the bottom row and skip one row and then put yarn on the next row. I'm going to be leaving like a triangle part from the middle of the hat and just leave this part empty for now because I'm going to be making like bangs for the wig and I'm just going to keep this blank. So I just finished putting all the yarn strands onto the cap. I have a wire brush right here. I got it from the dollar store. And I just used this to brush out the strands starting from the bottom going up just to loosen the strands and unwind them. After I'm done using the wire side, I use the other side. We don't have to use the other side, but I like using it just to make it a bit more fuzzy. After we're done brushing out the little strands, this is how it's supposed to look. It looks kind of crumpled up and everything. And I'll show you later on how we're going to fix that. One thing I would like to add is that we will end up with a lot of this fuzz. You can actually reuse the fuzz and put it inside as stuffing inside like amigurumis or something. If you know any other ideas, you can put comment it down below. Okay, so I have a hair straightener right here. And this is what I'm going to use to straighten the yarn wig and not have any more of the crinkles that I showed before. And we're gonna just do little sections and straighten little by little. I put the hair straightener in the lowest heat setting which is 140 degrees for mine. A lot of other straighteners can be different. If you have one that's higher than that, you can probably try like go through it quickly not slowly so you don't burn the wig and makes it smell weird. I bought one specifically just for this one because I don't have my own hair straightener. <laughs> so all we have to do is straighten out the strands and then brush it out and just keep doing that throughout the whole entire wig. And this is how it should look. And this is how my wig looks when it's completely finished. I put on the ears and that's the reason why I created this wig. Now let's go try to do a montage. Mm -hmm. 